Hello, my friends. Uh, let's try that again. Take two. I don't know what happened. Um, don't know what happened there. Don't know at all. <laughs> um, things just kind of dropped out and all of a sudden the screen went blank and the mic went dead and all that stuff. So um, I can't go back and see what you said on the other post, not at this point. So, um, so I hope that you are able to um, log back in to this one. Um, that is my hope. That is my hope. I'm going to just give it a little bit before I really start in earnest to, um, to get things up and running. Um, yeah, that's what happens when, um, when someone else does your cleaning for you sometimes, I guess. Like, that's new. Um, yeah, everything just was unplugged and not sitting well in the, in the outlet. So everything just kind of started to fall apart. So <coughs> I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that, hey, there we are. Yay, you're back. Thank goodness. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm so sorry about that. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's hope to get, um, yeah, there's Josie letting me know, <laughs> saying, ah, what happened? Um, yeah, it's, uh. Yes, it started. Um, so sorry. Everybody's got technical issues now and again. So that was, today's the day for me. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get back to it, shall we? So, um, so we're talking about um, voiceover genres. And we all know that there are many genres and many ways in which to have a career in voiceover. Um, let me turn my mic up there. Um, uh, and so if you're new to voiceover and, and um, you know, I, I feel like this is really um, more geared toward people who are newer um, to voiceover, but it, it but it, um, it's important to people who've been around a while too, because um, because of the ebbs and flows of a voiceover career. You know, I did commercial for the longest time without doing anything else, right? And then I then I added promo to that, and then you know somewhere along that path I added narration, right? And and I certainly didn't do it all at once. And sometimes you know necessity was the mother of invention you know if uh if uh, if you've been at it for a while and particular pieces of your career just aren't working anymore you know then you sort of have to add this whole notion of diversity and you know what other genres can you work in and how do you go about figuring out um whether or not you would be good in those genres right so uh, but i'm going to take it from the point of view of like i'm just starting and what do i do and then for those who've been around a little bit longer, you know, you'll glean for yourself. Um, it's a lot, it's the same principle, um, but just a little bit different circumstance. So, um, so the only way that we can know if we're good at a particular genre is to try it. It's the only way. Um, so when you are beginning, I think it's really a good idea to um, open yourself to um, a variety of auditions, right? Um, and to see whether or not you like the particular thing that you're reading. You know, for a long time, I, I thought, oh, you know, I'm pretty good with language and I'm pretty good with deciphering words. I'm a really good sight reader. And those are attributes of someone who might do medical narration, right? And so I started to accept a couple of jobs doing medical narration. And after a little bit, I realized I hate this. I, like, I really don't like it. I had a, a, I remember once having this insanely long script. It was a full eight hour day of, you know, recording really complex words um, and really complex sentences and it wasn't laid out very well. The, um, the pronunciation guide was in a completely separate document and was never linked to any 
sort of online pronunciation. And it was torturous. It was absolutely torturous. So even though I had the skill for it, I didn't have the desire to do it. I didn't, um, it didn't sit well with me, right? It didn't, it just didn't, it wasn't a good fit. So we can all say, um, you know, we, we can all ask the question, what are you good at? But just because you're good at something doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to want to do it, you know? So I think that to discover what kind of genres you're good at, um, well, discover is the, is the operative word there, right? We have to, in the beginning, we have to do a little bit of reconnaissance, which means we have to try new things. Um, and it is in trying new things that you will, um, you'll either discover that, oh, wow, I, I have an aptitude for this. I'm good at this. Um, and then alongside it might be, oh, I really like this, right? I really like doing this. And if those two things, you know, collide, then that's awesome. You've got something that you have an aptitude for and that you're good at. That sounds like kind of a winning genre for you. Um, sometimes we really like a particular genre very much, but our aptitude for it is, is underdeveloped, right? And so that isn't necessarily uh, some sort of sign that you should not uh, engage that particular genre, but rather it is a message to you to say, if you really wanna work in this genre, um, then you're going to have to get a lot of training. You're going to have to stay on your training and you're going to have to keep up with it. And you're going to have to be patient with yourself as you, um, as you learn it. Um, that was my, um, that was my sensibility with, um, with animation. I had sort of decided that I wanted to do it. And then I realized I needed to take some classes. I was too afraid to take classes in public, if you will. And so I did some at home, uh, courses on my own. And once I had enough confidence there, I sort of stepped out into doing, uh, some workshops and things like that, where I built more confidence all the while auditioning, all the while auditioning until, and as, as you all know, I've said it a million times, um, you know, and until finally after four years, I, I booked something. So that was a long process, right? But I knew I had a lot to learn. I may have wanted to engage it, thought that I had the capacity to do it, but I really, really needed to spend some time really learning the genre and really summoning my nerve, uh, my, my, um, cultivating my willingness to take chances and look foolish and all of those things that are necessary to certainly to doing animation. Um, so yes, John Gardner, when a genre is new to you, it can be difficult to self-evaluate. That's very, very true. And I think again, that's where, um, that's where connecting yourself to people, you know, connecting yourself to a posse of people who, uh, who understand the business, who know you, who are supportive of you, who, with whom you can be, um, honest, about what you're attempting to do and you know that they can be honest with you as they evaluate, right? Um, I still have these kinds of uh, friendships and relationships in the business where I can say, what do you think about this? And I trust these people that I know so well that when they come back and they say, you know, that's a good take, however, you might, next time you might want to, or if you're gonna do another take, try this, or you know what? I don't know that that's really you. I don't know that that's really like there's an inauthenticity to it or some something of that nature, you know, which they're always very, um, we're, we're always, we work to be very kind, you know, and supportive, even in the face of, uh, even in the face of, especially in the face of, you know, constructive criticism, right? It's really important. And it's really important, again, to set your ego aside. And by ego, I don't mean you're, you know, some big bloated head. I, I mean, you know, that part of you that is critical and judgmental of you and will, you know, where you'll spend some time degrading yourself, you know, if, if you don't get the best of feedback, right? It's, and that's why that notion of, of being um, a detached observer of your work, right? And, and um, the way that you learn to become a detached observer is, uh, of your work is by 
um, is by allowing people that you trust near you to give you constructive criticism and also for you to give constructive criticism of their work. It helps us cultivate our ear, right? If someone's asking you to listen critically, right? You, um, and, and knowing, knowing that you love this person and you want to be kind and you want to be helpful and not dismissive of their work, right? That it, not only does it cultivate that in us when we are speaking to others, but it cultivates it in ourselves so that we can start to play that role for ourselves too. And that's ultimately what we want to do, because if we're a detached observer, just like we're, we, um, just like when we're listening to work on screen, right? When we're listening to the work of people in the business, you know, on with cartoons or what have you, we're listening. We're listening for their work. We really are. And so we then have to apply that sensibility to ourselves when we're listening. It's like we ask ourselves, what is that guy doing that makes this so good? What is it that he's doing that she's doing that makes this so funny? What's ha right? This is the same type of mindset that we have to apply to ourselves. And it, it is an ongoing thing. It's a lifelong skill to cultivate. It's not going to happen in a minute. It's not going to happen in six months. It's not going to happen in a year. It's just an ongoing process of learning how to listen and to self-evaluate. Um, as a detached observer of your own work. So um, uh, it, it's not an easy answer, um, John, for sure. And I know you know that. Um, but again, this is where we have to really be patient with ourselves and, and recognize that we are, it's all about learning. It's all about growing. It's all about getting better. It's not about becoming perfect. It's all about getting better, right? Um, that's funny, Genevieve, I took an animation class. I was embarrassed creating a specific character and I was told it was spectacular. But even listening to the recording, I still find it embarrassing and terrible. So interesting. I wonder what that will be like for you in a couple of years. It, it, you know, hold on to it. Hold on to it. And in a couple of years, you know, after a little bit more experience under your belt, you know, go back and listen to it again as a detached observer and say, what worked? What didn't work? Um, those are both fantastic questions to ask because usually in every audition that we do or every, every little piece of creation, there's something that works. And we have to be as willing to acknowledge that as we are willing to say what didn't work. Um, so um, I think too, when particularly with animation, when you are just starting and it's outside of our sort of what our normal voice sounds like it, it, I don't know. I felt the same when I was first developing, you know, figuring out how to develop characters. I just thought I sounded ridiculous, R ridiculous. And so, okay, I just accepted it. All right. I sound ridiculous. Somebody else thinks there's something good in that. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to just accept that I sound, I, th that I think I sound ridiculous. Um, and other people don't. All right, I'm just going to accept that, right? And eventually, I mean, I I got to a point with certain characters that I developed where I can't even hear myself anymore. And that is a remarkable feeling. That's a remarkable experience where you go, wow, I can't even find myself. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but I feel like those are the little bullseye moments, you know, where it's like, wow, you know. Um, <coughs> It's a, it's a, it's a nice little payday after, you know, years and years and years of work on something. Um, Daniel, how many genres are too many? I don't, I don't think, um, you know, I don't think there are too many. You know, I think as long as you are, as long as you are pursuing the things that you like, that you're good at, or that you have aptitude for and can get better at and that you enjoy, who's to say you can't work in the mall? I mean, I have on my, uh, my website, I have commercial, 
promo in show narration, live announcing, um, corporate narration, affiliate promo. Um, I even have radio imaging on there. I mean, I have a lot of demos. I work in all those areas. I didn't work in all those areas. I didn't start working in all those areas all at once. That I did not do. I think that's a bit of a, of a, of an unusual person, um, to be able to do that. Um, please pardon incoming message from daughter. Um, okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> My daughter just asked me to start her laundry. Um, <laughs> uh, <coughs> so I think, I think it's, again, for those who are, are, you know, sort of, if you've established yourself in a, in one or two areas and you're, and you're looking to diversify, if you will, um, you know, that's always a good thing. Um, whether you're wanting to diversify because you're kind of bored with what you're doing or because work in that area has slowed down, right. And you want to keep yourself busy and you want to keep yourself at it, right. That's the time to examine something new and say, huh, maybe I'll try this. And the truth is when you examine a new area of voiceover, you, um, you end up kind of rejuvenating all of the other areas that you work in, right? Um, you know, there are times when all I want, you know, if, if there are times when I'm sort of heavily working in, uh, video games or dubbing, and those are long sessions. They're long sessions, right? they can be two, three, four hours long. And sometimes they get really, really tedious and, and they require a lot of concentration and focus. And sometimes it's really exhausting. And so I, and I long then for, you know, a 30 second commercial, I kind of go, Oh, I should just give up. I don't want to work in video games anymore. I'm just going to go back to doing commercials. And then, you know, and then I'll, you know, the things will ebb and flow. And all of a sudden I'll be doing some commercial work and I'll be like, oh, I really could use a script that I could sink my teeth into, <laughs> you know. So, I, I, um, so it's so in that regard, it's really good to have to have different genres. Um, but I think what's important is that you, um, you at least master one. Master. That's that. You know, don't be fooled by that by that word. I don't mean like master it with ten thousand hours. I just mean master it to the point where you can really audition comfortably. And you, you have, you really have a sense that you know what you're doing, even though there's always room to learn and always room to grow, but that you have a sense that you, you know, of a solid foundation in a particular area and then, you know, and then try expanding. Um, and the only exception to that would be is if you really have aptitude for one or two or three genres, like right out of the gate and and you can sort of work on them and continue to cultivate them all at the same time but i don't think there are i don't think you know the notion of too many genres i don't i don't think that is real as long as you are you know good at them if you will you know or you like them enough um that you are willing to work at them that's that's really it and I think in terms of, I feel like at the core of this question, when it was asked of me, I could be wrong. I could, may have just, you know, read, read into it. But what I read into it was that there might've been some question about um, how other people perceive you in voiceover. Like, how do I know what I'm good at? Um, it, does that come from external validation, right? Um, what, uh, like, what do, what do other people think I should do, right? And that is, um, that's a double-edged sword. Um, because I think sometimes agents, friends even, people you work closely with, can begin to see you in one particular way and fail to be able to see that there's more to you than meets the eye. And so we can't always rely upon external validation to know what we're good at, 
right? Or what we should be doing, right? Ultimately, I do think it is that magical confluence of something that you love and something that you're good at, right? And if you're not quite good at it yet, but you love it and you have aptitude, you know, just because you have aptitude for something doesn't mean you're good at it yet, right? Um, I have aptitude for math, but I can't even remember my time scales. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it, th there's a difference. There's, there's a difference. So, um, so knowing if you have an aptitude for something, which means that, you, that you've got it in you, but you still have to cultivate the skill. Um, some, some of us don't have an aptitude for particular things. Like, you know, some people can do legal copy because they, of how they, they're able to move their mouth very quickly. Other people can't, most people can't, right? Some people have the capacity to create a thousand characters. You know, um, some of us are, are better at characters that are more realistic in nature, right? Um, that where they've got sort of animated qualities, but are, um, but are really, you know, sound more realistic or, or human at the core. I'm using a lot of quotation marks today. Um, so, um, so I, I think it's, you know, on the one hand, it's important to listen to others when they say to you, wow, you're really good at that, you know, but that's not the be all end all. It's whether you want to do it or not. It's whether you're willing to sink your teeth into it or not and get better at it. And again, I use medical narration as, a, as, a, as an example for me. I could be really good at it, but I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Some people love it. They have an aptitude for it. They love it. And it, consequently, it shows in the work, and that's why they keep getting more of the work, right? Ultimately, it's like, if you don't love what you're doing, it's, it's eventually going to show up in the work and that's not going to be good. Right? So let me see if there are some other questions. Good. Okay. I'm so glad. Um, I'm so glad that that helped, um, Daniel about the, how many is too many. Um, let's see. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Jane, you do medical light. Yes, I do medical light. I do, sometimes I do, um, you know, pharmaceutical drug things, but it's, that's still a lot. So, um, Kim Fuller, reposting from previous video. I've had coaching for narration and commercial, and for me, the best genre is narration. But no top level agent will take on a talent without a commercial demo, right? I have narration demo, demos. I've also done some promo workshops, and while I seem a good fit for promo. My life doesn't support the availability needs. Right. That's, those are all really, really great points. Um, I think you can have a promo career um, if you live outside of LA or New York, um, but it will largely be because you established yourself as a promo actor, a promo voice actor in those cities. Right. Um, and, uh, And also, yes, there are, there are requirements beyond, you know, having a home studio with, with promo, with affiliate work, you are tied to your studio. So if you have a family, let's say as an example, and you are out and you are taking your kids to and from, and you, uh, let's say you travel as like, it's not gonna, that's not going to be a genre that works for you because you got to be home. You got to be home all the time. You have to be on, you are on call. I mean, I think, you know, they talk about velvet handcuffs. It's exactly what it is. It can pay well, but you are tied to your studio. It, it ends up becoming a, I was going to say nine to five job, but it's, it's more like a 24 seven job because you never know if some, if some news, if, if something newsworthy happens in the world, I mean, you are, you are on call. It doesn't matter if it's midnight or three in the morning. Um, you know, you, you are on call for your news stations, right? Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not good at radio imaging. I have a demo for radio imaging, but it's not my thing. It's not, it isn't my thing. I'm not, I'm not good at it. Like the, like the people who are good at it are good at it. 
And the people who are good at it are like, wow, how do you even read that way? I, I don't even, it's not a part of my ear. It's not a, it's not a part of my structure. You know what I mean? So, um, so to the, to the question or the problem posed about, um, a top level agent taking on talent without a commercial demo, that's true because commercials are still the lifeblood of voiceover. That is the most work there is. I would say narration is a, is a close second, but, um, but commercial is still the number one genre. Um, and so <coughs> at the very least, you know, it may not be your favorite, um, it may not be your favorite genre, but it is a genre that you, that you need a demo for. And that way you're, um, you know, that way you're able to, um, solicit the, uh, you know, relationship with, um, with a top level agent, if you will. I actually think most agents, whether they're A, B or C level, uh, agents, um, require a commercial demo because it's that prevalent. Right. And so, um, so having that foundational thing of a, of a commercial demo, I think really is imperative. Um, but it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you will, uh, that that will be the bulk of your work, but it is an important one to have. I, I definitely stand by that. And, um, and I think it is true that they want you to have, they want you to have a commercial demo hands down. And then if you've got it and anything beyond that is really, you know, fantastic. Um, let's see, let's see if there are any more questions. I don't think so. Um, I think that's all. I think that's all. I think that's all. I hope you, I hope Yvonne made it back. Yvonne, I don't know if you're there, but I hope you made it back. I really appreciate you having, having been on that first one. Um, so if that, I hope that that is helpful. Um, ultimately, how do you find out what, how do you find out what your best genres are? What do you love? That's your first question. What do you want to do? That's, that's, that's number one. And then you go through the process of discovering if you have aptitude for it and to what degree you have ap aptitude, if it's fairly well developed, right? That's sort of the first thing you want to focus on. And if it's something you love, um, you have aptitude, but you have more to learn that that's, it's all instructional, right? It all, it all helps us determine what it is then that we need to do, what path we take to getting the work that we want. Um, and again, it's all, if we can really, really shift out of our, uh, you know, kind of feeling our way through these questions, but rather, um, be a detached observer, which means, you know, like separating yourself from your feelings about it all and really make an evaluation, a reasoned evaluation about where you are somewhere. The information that you gather from that is really what sets you it really sets your course, sets your course of action, right? I love this genre. I'm pretty good at it, but you know what? I need work. I need to know more. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do is find some coaching in that particular genre. And there all of a sudden you've got, you have something in front of you that you can focus on and you have a goal, right? So, um, I hope that that is helpful. Um, I guess the last thing I want to say is that, um, it is important listening to what other people have to say about what you're good at is important, but it's not the end. It's not the end. Let it, let it inform you, but don't let it stop you. Um, you know, I was with an agent for a long, 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 long time who, you know, together we had both convinced ourselves that video games and animation were not my thing. And, and I stayed in that space for a very, very, very long time. And, you know, only to discover a decade later that, wow, I, I can actually do those things, but I was talked out of it. Right. Um, I was talked out of it by their perception of me. So perception is not reality, not always. Right. So, um, so it's good to have, but keep it in perspective. So, um, I hope that that is helpful. And of course, as, as always, you know, 
uh, come find me if you have other questions or if I can be of help to you. And um, I want to say, oh, you know, I think someone posted, um, and forgive me for not remembering who, somebody posted about travel gear. They asked about travel gear. And I, I, uh, I posted the video that I did a while back about my travel gear. But I just want to encourage you that if you have travel gear, Go back to that. Uh, go back to that post and uh, add your two cents because we all travel a little bit differently, and how we set things up is always a little different. And it's always nice to uh, to give each other some uh, some new perspectives. So, um, with that in mind, I leave you to the rest of your Wednesday. Thank you for hanging with me and um, uh, and for making the trek to the to the new video <laughs> as my last one went went a wall. Um, uh, so I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Wednesday uh, and a great remainder of the week. And I will see you next weekend. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Mwah!